Hello back, guys. Today's video will be, I mean, the topic will be kind of hot. So let's dig into it. So basically, today we will be explaining how to make HTML web pages executable in the background. Okay. So imagine that you received an email from one of your colleague or from one of your friends, and this email contains a link. You clicked on the link. You see a basic innocent. I mean, HTML page, while uh, in, the in the backstage, your friend is enjoying full access to your machine. Okay, this method works only on Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge, all right? I know while this attack vector, you know, only works against Internet Explorer and to some extent, I mean, let me say to some extent, Microsoft Edge, it is still useful since many, I mean, people, many corporations rely on Internet Explorer as their main browser. Moreover, this vector, I'm going to explain, leverage features directly built into Windows operating systems. And more importantly, it is compatible with less secure Microsoft legacy technologies, such as, you say, ActiveX. Okay, so how HTML exploitation or... HTML, let me, I'm not going to say HTML exploitation, actually. Let me name it HTML applications or make HTML uh, files executable. So basically, guys, as you can see in the code here, I have, you know, as you can see, a simple HTML, you know, file, right? But it contains two lines. First, it defines a variable called cmd.exe, okay? And then it defines ActiveX object, okay? and uses Windows script hosting to run whatever in the variable C over here, okay? This is called MS, uh, sorry, mshta.exe. It's, it's, I mean, this is file is being used or it's used by Windows script hosting to run this kind of things inside HTMLs. So basically this code, okay, we can, Embed it in any HTML page, okay? And we can make the page kind of, you know, inside a link, and you can send this link via email, WhatsApp, whatsoever. And based on your social engineering tricks, uh, sorry, skills, you can trick the victim, or you can trick your target, or you can trick the, let me say, your clients, in case you're doing um, penetration testing on premises, you can test your client by orchestrating social engineering attack alongside with HTML, I mean, attacks, right? So this alone, it's, kind of, it's not going to work because most people now, I mean, yeah, a large chunk of people are using Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge, but there's still also a larger chunk using Chrome and Firefox. And most of the time, this uh, attack without social engineering skills will not work. So... Your social engineering skills, you will use your social engineering skills to trick your target into using Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay. So basically here, what happens in this code, as I explained. Um, okay. So basically, the functionality of this code is based on the Windows script hosting. Okay. Now, this code is for explanation purposes only. A more realistic version of this attack could be, I mean, can be achieved with MSF Venom. So let's try to use MSF Venom to create a payload, HTML payload using PowerShell with a reverse shell connection back to our machine and try to send it out to a target machine. So let me close that, let me save it. This is for explanation only, okay? This is to tell you how the HTML application works or the execution inside HTML works. Okay. So, so basically, I created the payload. So let me explain. So basically here, guys, we, we will use here, we used MSF Venom to turn our basic HTML application into an attack relying on the HTA, PSH, which is the output format to create an HTA payload based on PowerShell. Okay. Now, 
we generate this uh, payload and also the file format or the file output should be in HTA format. Okay. The format you are using is HTAPSH, meaning that we're creating an executable version of HTML page using, using PowerShell and you output this file to, you output this to a file, let's say index.hta. So if I click on enter, let me change the file name, index2. Let's see how this payload will look like. Okay, now let's get our Hmm, interesting. Okay, so let, let me walk you through this. So basically, this is the script. Okay, start from here to this visual basic and ends up down here. So our payload starts from um, this line. This is our payload, okay? Now, as you can see here, our final payload used WB script, Windows host scripting, which is a very necessary component in order to turn HTML into an executable uh, format, let me say. Okay. So basically here, let's dissect this command over here. So I have PowerShell, as I instructed MS at Venom, and I have dash nop. The first argument here, dash nop, is shorthand for no profile, which instructs PowerShell not to load the PowerShell user profile, which is very critical. You don't want to require administrative privilege in, to run this um, HTML. Now, when the PowerShell is started, as you know, as you all know, it will by default load an existing user's profile scripts, which might negatively impact the execution of our code. This option over here will eliminate this issue. Okay, let's go to this one. Minus W hidden means it's shorthand for dash window style hidden, which is to avoid creating a window on the user's desktop. We don't want to create windows, right? We don't want to make the user suspicious or susceptible of anything going um, beyond their attention. And the final the extremely important minus or dash E flag, shorthand for encoded command, allows us to, use, to supply page 64 encoded partial script directly as a command line argument, which is this one. Now, after that, we can host this HTML file or HTML file in a web server. You host this on your web server, and then you send it out via email or you send it out via uh, WhatsApp, Facebook, whatsoever. Make sure to encode your URL into a friendly URL or use um, you know, URL shorteners. All right, now your next step is to orchestrate a social engineering attack to trick your target into opening or using Internet Explorer. A plot line could be like this. Um, you can send your, for example, if your client or if your target is a client, and you know the scope of your penetration testing is for, let's say, HR department. So you can send, for example, uh, a plot line in your email saying that, hi, I am John. I am applying for the position of, let me say, um, CEO. <laughs> and this is my resume in this link. Now, note, in order to open my resume, you can only use Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge because for some reason, I couldn't have it opened on Chrome or Firefox. So your target, which will be a human resource, in this case, they will be tricked into opening your link using Internet Explorer. All right, and you will gain access to their machine. Now, I'm gonna test this on a Windows 7, all right? And let's see how this works. So before all of that, make sure to have your Apache 2 running, up and running. And let's set up a listener. And the port we used was uh, 4545. Okay, <clears throat> now we are now the human resource troll. 
And here, they will be browsing to your file, index, hta. All right? When they click enter, now supposedly they are doing your resume, right? Okay, they will be presented with this security warning saying that this index tool, it wants to run something. Now, as an HR person, depending on the security awareness that this HR person has been undergoing or has been exposed to, and depending on the knowledge of this HR person, all right, it will decide whether they will click on run or not. This is very critical, okay? Now, let's say they click on run, nothing suspicious. Now, another warning will pop up, which will say this page, I mean, hosts some kind of HTML application host. Again, again, based on your social engineering tricks and based on the target's knowledge and awareness, it will decide what's going to go further. Now, let's say they click on allow. Before clicking, on, before clicking on allow, you must know, guys, that if you encounter an HTML web page, let's say you use Internet Explorer, let's say you were rushing um, and your Chrome didn't work, Firefox didn't work, so you, were, so you were forced to use Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge. And during these times, you receive these kind of warnings while you are opening a page. Make sure that you don't allow, okay? Now we click on allow. You see nothing happened, as you can see. Now let me go back to my Linux. And I see here, I have gained access to the Windows system. Okay. I can go to directory structure, and I can have all kind of low hanging fruits. So basically, what's the take here? The first one, to make your attack more realistic, you can, let's go back. Oh, no, I have shit, right? Okay, let's go here. CD bar. Okay, this is your script, right? You can take that script, Okay, and put it inside an HTML page so that when your target or a client, when they clicked on allow, okay, it will not um, keep them in the same page. It will direct them to another page so that they won't get suspicious about your URL. Worst case scenarios, they will get back to you and say, look, you, you, this link didn't work. After that, you send the correct one or you send the resume. Make sure you send it also in Internet Explorer so they won't get suspicious. So basically, as I said in the first video, guys, this attack will not work if you don't trick your target to use Internet Explorer or Microsoft Teams. Good luck, and I hope this was somewhat helpful.